you want it, you got it. Mm -hmm. like you want, you want this. He wants it. You, you asked for this, bro. You're the one who came in here and went freaking ape on dogs. Right. So you do believe that he was pretty much in the backyard most of his life or you're not sure so we're the third owners uh he doesn't really come when we call him yeah. yeah he's a he's a wanderer so with no regard for where you guys are likes cruising more than he likes you guys <laughs> look at this guy he loves it he's so happy <laughs> he loves it he's just too hey. excited hey no yeah anyway, just his body he doesn't listen. no Shh. chill out Hey, that was perfect, dude. He ran into her, you marked it with a noise, you grabbed him, you put him on his side, it was perfect. You're gonna see a very difficult dog become friends with other dogs, because I'm gonna use everything I know. Prince is gonna do everything he can do by defending other dogs, giving this dog corrections, and Prince being at his very best, and the owners being some of the best owners you're ever gonna see, because this dog is tough. He is a completely unsocialized, not neutered male dog who has dominance and has never been around dogs. And we're going to get him with dogs and we use, need to use everything. Gates, muzzles, leashes. We need Prince to give corrections. We need the other dogs to give corrections. And you're going to start to see it right now and some amazing body language, which, which I'm going to slow down for you. And watch these owners, okay? Because they're going to teach you something because it is not just me that's going to give these corrections. So it's, it's right at this moment where I'm realizing how out of control this guy is, how strong he is, and how he can barely hold himself back. Now, I still don't know the motivations, right? His tail was wagging before. Does that mean he's happy? Does that mean he's stimulated? Does that mean he wants to fight? It can mean all those things. I still don't know. So I choose to not let Prince be the first dog because I want to not have the two unneutered males be the first two things. So we let in another dog. Now, at this point, he he doesn't look aggressive. He looks completely unsocialized and i'm like okay this dog's a good dog and then right here watch this not cool hey. not cool and look at it look at his body look how strong he is look how stimulated he is it's right now i start to see his face and i start to realize this guy's a little bit his brain you can see it in his eyes okay his brain is a little and his breathing and his panting it's not hot that day I have a jacket on. Everyone's got pants on. It's not hot. His whole body heats up. He doesn't know what to do with himself. So we are going to have to use every single skill that I have of calming him, of safely getting him with dogs and not just my dog, with other dogs because that's what these guys want. Now, do they want to go to dog parks? Not necessarily. They, but, but they just got this dog. They've had him a month. You're going to hear the original audio I talk about. Okay, he's too much. He's too much for this dog. Now this dog is doing great. The other doberman is doing awesome. Okay. Now we're going to bring Prince in because I realize, so Prince is in right now. He, he, and you're going to see Prince now do something that is pretty amazing. Okay. Watch the other dog gets mad and Prince comes and defends the other dog right there. He just, he got in the way. He said, if you want to do this, do it with me. Don't do it with one of my friends. Look at him stand off. Now, Prince is, Prince does not hate this dog. You've seen Prince not like other dogs. Prince is going to retaliate right there. He says, don't put your, he, he bides his time. Then he says, don't put your head over my back in that dominant way. Then he says, okay, now watch the roughness of the smelling. Okay. But I'm still at the point where I realized leash corrections are not going to fix this guy. If he wants to go get in a fight with a dog or go be mean to a dog, go do it. You may not like what happens to you. I do that all the time. I do it with leash reactivity. They pull, they think they want to get to a dog. I go, hey, go, go, go see the dog. Now watch this. Another over the back and Prince gets mad at him. Okay, now it's time. I realize Prince is not going to be the one that is on his own going to fix this dog. I'm not willing to let it go that far to where you've heard me talk about it before. So I need to do it. I need to help. I need to have the leash. He needs to be overwhelmed on two fronts. I say, Prince, good job. Okay. Uh, do you see me give him a thumbs up and look at the dog? He's like, he needs this. He needs to be overwhelmed because underwhelming him, going slow, taking him to a dog park and walking him around. So he gets to know dogs. Yeah. You're going to do that for the next seven years because he is not going to desensitize two dogs unless you throw him in the deep end. And that's what we're doing. 
in the deep end, in with two dogs, no muzzle on. You'll see him at the fence. We, we still have to, I let dogs out in a little bit and he meets the dogs through the fence, but he needs to meet dogs. So we're gonna go the original audio because the best thing you can hear is from what I say to the person right after. So is there a reason why, so he's wagging his tail, but then being very aggressive is that, I'm assuming it's not playful. He likes the whole thing. He, there's a dominance, there's a lack of dog being with dogs yeah. and it's all new and it's exciting and it, mm -hmm. he's relatively good. Then there is a dominance thing between these two dogs. With him, it was like just insanity at the beginning and it kind of blew up and right. he's rough and the other dog's like, get away from me. And he's like, don't talk to me like that. And it was just a little skirmish. Now it's a dominance thing. Because mm -hmm. they're both unneutered? Because they're both unneutered. Now my goal was, one, he's getting with a dog, which is always a plus, okay? Two, my goal was, my goal was to let, my goal is to let this dog know, you guys, cause you guys, you have a problem. You can't come to another dog's house and act like he's acting. Right. Now, that's where we are. You adopted a two-year-old dog, unneutered dog. That's where we are. We gotta deal with it. But you, so, I'm not saying an indictment on you guys. I'm saying an indictment on this dog because you've had him for a month. He cannot come to his house and act the way he's acting. 100%. And if you do. Yeah, you should be put in your place. Things are going to get rough. And he, I wanted to work in conjunction. Hopefully him putting him down, which we can let happen to a degree. But this guy, is, he's so worked up because he's a neutered. So it's another level for him right. of going, I need to really do this. Then me and us overwhelming his little butt with two forces of saying, from a dog, from a person, you want it, you mm -hmm. got it. Mm -hmm. like you want, you want this. He wants it. You, you asked for this, bro. You're the one who came in here and went freaking ape on dogs. Right. I'm not blaming him because he's been in the backyard for two years or whatever. I'm not blaming him, but this is where we're at. Right. You wanted it, you got it. He needs to learn the rules, basically. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't. It, it's like he doesn't know the rules of engaging with a new dog in their own territory. Exactly. He doesn't know them. He, he can't even stop himself from engaging the way he's engaging. So we got to do it for him. So my tactic right there was, you want to be crazy to a dog, go be crazy to a dog. You might not, you might not like what happens to you, but we'll see, because it's the only place you can do it. Right. Okay, it didn't really work because, because he, he got spun out. Then we had, we're just not willing to let it go where it could go. Mm -hmm. As bad as it was, we're not willing to let it go farther. Right. There was a tactic of me being on the leash, right? And sort of trying to leg flips, punishments where I picked him up and brought him over here of, 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 of having additional punishment to the, to the badness. But in the middle of it, he got spun out. So he just literally was like, what the hell's going on? Which is fine, I don't care. You don't care. He needs to get spun out a little bit. Mm -hmm. He needs to be overwhelmed a little bit. How's your wife? She's okay. Svetlana. She, I think she's freaked out a little bit right now. I don't know him like this. Well, let's not just think of Prince. Mm -hmm. How about the way he was with this one? Oh. Right, remember when this one came in? That's why I let this one in first. I didn't mm -hmm. want to go to a 10 mm -hmm. unneutered males. I mm -hmm. went this one. He was not great with this one either. Mm -hmm. You have been good at dog parks, luckily. Your time, I believe, was going to run out. Okay. That unneutered husky was gonna come in one day, mm -hmm. and I think you would have a problem one in 10 times. One in 10 problems, you had been there how many times? Four? Three times. Three times. Yeah. I think you're gonna hit a problem one in 10 times. Mm -hmm. you, I'd rather have this happen here mm -hmm. than when you're by yourself at your dog park. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you it was gonna happen. It was gonna happen mm -hmm. at some point. Desensitizing to dogs is what we're gonna do right now. The goal is for this dog to be able to meet other dogs safely. He has gotten a little better from him meeting that Doberman. He's gotten a little better from Prince giving him corrections. He's gotten a little better from me giving him corrections, but he has not gotten to the point where we need him to be. So we need to take it up a notch. We need to do more. We're gonna do muzzles. You're gonna see muzzles. You're gonna, this is a leash. This is a fence meeting right now, which we need to do because this is how we're gonna get the dog numbers up. We let out more dogs. He hasn't seen that golden. He hasn't seen this other Doberman that you see. There's two Dobermans that look the exact same.
So he hasn't seen them. Now you're going to see something interesting right about now at the fence. Watch him look up right now. Why do dogs look up when they're at a fence? Because they're looking to jump the fence. He wants to get to these dogs so badly that he's willing to fall off a three foot cement wall and possibly hit his knees on them. He's willing to jump the fence. He's willing to do whatever because his brain is taking him to a place where he will do anything to get to them, to dominate them, to play with them, to fight them. It's not entirely clear to him or to us what he wants to do when he gets there. Owner t grabs him, sits him down, calms him down. You're going to see the owner do some good stuff in a minute, and I'm going to highlight it for you. The answer to this dog is not like what a lot of people think. Look at that jump. It's not a lot. There are trainers who will tell you to go to a dog park and sit 50 feet away and give your dog treats. It'll take you nine years for that to work with this dog. And it won't even work because the actual training, it'll work because the dog is at that point 10 years old and he's old and he's a little bit tired. So every time he barks, the owner grabs him. Now you're going to see the owner up the ante because he is not as calm and he rushes off after the owner lets him go. He rushes off. So the owner grabs him and you're gonna, and I'm watching. I'm going, okay, this guy's good. This guy knows what he's doing. How does he know what he's doing? He just knows. The, the dog didn't get the point, so we need to up the, the discipline, okay? And he's still up in the discipline. Okay, he's still not getting the point. Okay, now your head goes down. So it was started with a grab, then a butt push down, then a, on the side, then a head push down. And you might say, well, this isn't that great. There, there's nothing terribly special happening. No, there's nothing terribly special happening. But he upped it every time the dog didn't seem to get the point because he read the dog's body language. And then what you're going to see in a minute is the proof is going to be in the pudding. You hear me say it all the time. What di is what the owner did super special? No, but has the dog ever left the fence in the last two minutes? No. After the owner put him on his side, the dog leaves. Proof's him? in the pudding. And all the dogs are staying away from him. I know. <laughs> yes. They're like, he's trouble. He's, he's, he's setting off those vibes. Yes. I agree. They don't like you, bro. And look, every time they get mad at him, he yeah, gets he happy. he gets happy. Yeah. He's a little bit. Look it, he gets excited. He's masochist. He likes it. Oh my God, that dog just really does not want to be right. <laughs> like, I'm me, ready, to, I'm ready. To get me out of here. On leash meeting. Listen, in a perfect world, we would be in a field and we'd let him get this out. Yeah. It's just, he's too much to let him get it out. Muzzle on. Most of these dogs minus Prince. If he's a jerk with these dogs, we're gonna maybe let the Kraken in. He is too much for dogs. Dogs don't like him. That is a problem. He doesn't even understand them. They growl at him. He kind of cares. He kind of doesn't care. He's 10 times better at this point than he was when he first came in and met that Doberman. And he just gets better and better and better. But we need to work on all fronts. So now he's loose. Oh, look at that. Flies by me. Now, why didn't I go finish it? Because once he got to the dog, he just wasn't that bad. If he got to that dog... And he was bad, I would have went to the bridge and I would have grabbed him. But he's getting slowly better with dogs. He's desensitizing to dogs because we got him with dogs. And they don't dislike him as much as they once did. They need to. It's good for these two, these dogs as well. They need to learn to stand up to a bully dog. They need to learn how to navigate the world. This, this is the world Prince was raised in. Okay, he's getting a little too much. I'm going to grab him, calm him for a second. He's not staring at the dog, so I let him go. And... He's back to the dog, but he's a little calmer than he was. Now you're going to see a dog play bound in front of him. You saw Prince play, play bound in front of him before, and this dog kind of likes him a little bit as well because he's less. He's less than he once was. Okay, play bound right there. All right, then he's going to get too much. Then the owner's going to come. He's too much. Is it aggression? No, it is not good though. It's too much for other dogs. You can't take this dog places when he acts like this. And too much. Owner comes in grabs him, okay? And proof's in the pudding. Doesn't matter what we think. Doesn't matter what I think about it. This guy did a good job. They both did. All right, now you're going to see me give some praise to this guy because he deserves it and you can learn from it. You guys are exceptional. 
for having this dog for three weeks a month yeah perfect. and for this dog to respond the way he does to your corrections and then for you to also know when to correct him but mainly the response to the corrections and the way your corrections worked on a very difficult dog is exceptional. 